How to Create Real-Time Generated One-Shot Animations in Touch Designer Take the works that participated in the Shanghai Light Festival last year as an example. It includes point cloud animation, camera control, and scene construction in TD. I've set up a couple of select chops here in order to monitor the progress of the whole animation. You can see the progress of this section in the selecta. Press 1 to start triggering the entire animation of the calf entering the field. Here is the section that controls the whale's animation and movement state. The chops in the middle are the position and rotation data of the whales at different stages of animation. Use a simple point transform to control the whale's movement. Switch chop to switch the data of different whale movement states. The animation now goes to the section with the ocean scene. The scene of the underwater coral is a ply file that has been converted in advance. Randomly generate the color of the coral via noise. This part is a point cloud of stones on the seabed. In order to increase the sense of randomness in the distribution of corals throughout the scene, I randomly generated some relatively good-looking corals. The method here is to multiply the individual coral models and the position of the noise. In order to create an atmosphere under the sea, NFLEX was used to generate schools of small fish that swim randomly. Now the camera is going to start moving and we're going to see how to control the shot. The lens is actually controlled by data as well. You have to make some data to control the movement of the camera at a certain time and according to certain rules. This part is to use the circle SOP to make a motion trajectory for the shot. In this tutorial, I talked about how to control the shot. Actually, I set up a lot of shots, and this cam one is a one-shot shot. Now it's time to move on to the second phase of the whole animation. I need to press the next trigger on the keyboard to trigger the animation. This allows you to control the movement of the shot, the scene, and the main character, The next scene is the deep sea. So the color of the sea changes from light blue to dark blue. A new underwater scene rises. Back to detection progress here, continue pressing a button to trigger the next part of the animation. This has a shot that rotates from the back of the protagonist to the side of the protagonist again. Controlled with data. In the deep ocean section, a number of other sea creatures were also designed in this space. There are turtles, jellyfish and the like. And the principle of making them is the same as that of whales. I also had a tutorial on how to import 3D animations into TD. Here we can try to change to a different lens. For example, the side-to-back view or the top-down view. I don't remember what kind of scene these lenses were used, but they were fixed lenses. And then you can see the jellyfish swimming out. And it's also controlled by data. Actually, the work was shown in an immersive space with three walls. So I did a rehearsal.
you can see how the work looks in the actual immersive space here. Okay, that's all there is to this section. The last part of this work is the whale fall, which is the node of this section. Again, use the keyboard to trigger the animation here. When I press the keyboard, the whale began to slowly fall. As the whale falls, its body also emits some particles. The final stage is also triggered with a keyboard. In this section, a UV map is used to generate particles that are living on the ocean floor. It was challenging to use TD to create such a one-shot animation. And it's true that TD can't do very realistic CG scenes, because it's generated in real time. However, TD is capable of real-time feedback, WYSIWYG, real-time control of parameters, easy to iterate and can be directly output as video or real-time projection. So if you're making something that combines abstraction and figuration, TD is still a great choice 